Hello there. Uh, it's Jim McGuffin calling. I'm a faculty member of materials science and engineering at Case Western. In the project area that we're interested in developing partnerships for is image analysis, particularly in the infrared for thermal mapping for process control with a particular goal of integrating this into existing manufacturing operations. And so everything we're talking about here, we think can be integrated into very conventional unit operations for manufacturing. The, uh, I don't have time to talk about some of the prior work that's been done in this area, but there have been tremendous advances in both the technology of collecting digital images, and it refers both to things in the optical and in the infrared, and the thermal imaging technology that's low cost is now really up to 600 degrees centigrade. It's very straightforward and very low cost to get robust pieces of solid state equipment that'll be able to do this in pretty severe environments. And there's been a lot of work in image processing. There are a lot of algorithms out there that have been developed for particular reasons but can be applied in other situations with a lot of success. And that's what we really want to do. The technologies where we see a benefit to being able to do this are very broad. So metal forging local temperature makes a big difference. In high speed sheet metal deformation, you get local temperature excursions that are significant and have to be controlled. Taylor welded blanks prevent you, present you with some challenges because you got large and small thermal masses that are physically in close proximity. And the conformal cooling um, strategy for dyes and tools has become much more practical with the advent of additive manufacturing. That's an area where we're starting to do some work. If I have time, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And then exo and endothermic processes that are near room temperature are another area where you could uh, benefit from integrating thermal imaging into the process control. Our objectives and our deliverables are very straightforward. I, was, I think I've already said this, but I want to stress that we're looking to leverage prior work whenever that's possible. I think that's one of the big benefits of the IUCRC is that we can leverage advancements that are done in related but different projects and we can uh, effectively pool a lot of the literature-based knowledge by having people working in parallel who are all independently collecting that information and sharing it in an in a organized and formal way. The goal, of course, is to get image analysis to be an automated or at least semi-automatic practical process control tool. And I really think it's, the, it's a, a horizon that we're all going to have to respond to. The third bullet is trying to speak to um, the working with a university that has some large scale equipment that's pilot plant scale. And we do have that metal extrusion, metal forging, sheet metal forming, and then also metal casting. That offers a lot of value to an industrial partner. So it's the equivalent of a, a shared central R&D kind of facility. And then um, the last bullet there is that we want to develop new approaches whenever it's necessary. And working in the group is an advantage for that. The deliverables are just classic IUCRC. We want to work closely with the partners to identify, in our case, particular application areas that are of high value. And we want to be able to uh, set up a set of critical experiments that bear directly on what we think are the critical process control variables. And we will develop and distribute all the appropriate codes. And I already mentioned the uh, laboratory tests that we think that we should do. In all of the cases that, or our philosophy is we'd like to go from these pilot plant to demonstration campus demonstration uh, projects where we put university people into the plant environment as well. If I have a few minutes and I see I only have a few, I'd like to just illustrate that 
where people are looking at conformal cooling of tooling for die casting and for polymer molding, you really need to be able to characterize the flaws that are in the near surface if you're going to put the cooling channels close to the surface. We have a facility on campus that's a large pot of molten aluminum into which we cyclically immerse a water-cooled specimen. The water-cooled specimen we've been using is a very simple geometry, but that can be generalized. Our strategy at this point was to verify that we could get infrared images from this classic test. This is the visible, this is the IR. When the sample, when the specimen is being pulled out of the aluminum, it's isothermal. We can monitor the development of the temperature gradients. This is two seconds out of the bath. This is seven seconds out of the bath. It's just about to go back into the bath. We can collect the thermal information as a function both of position and also of time. We can do finite difference modeling or multi-physics modeling kinds of experiments. We can compare the data and we are getting very good agreement. So we've been able to calibrate heat transfer coefficients, thermal conductivities, densities, flow rates, all that kind of stuff, emissivities. That was a big question. We also see a lot of direct application to things as widely used as welding. We would like to be able to use the thermal image data, the contour information and monitoring of the solidification front and the presence or absence of uh, excursions from the normal behavior back here as a way to qualify a weld based on its optical signal when it's being deposited rather than requiring it to be x-rayed afterwards. Those are just a couple of illustrative examples. We would love to have some initial conversations to try and develop areas of mutual interest. With that, I will close and thank you very much.